Hello dear students, in today's class we are going to discuss about an important topic of your IGCSE physics that is motion. Now what do you know by motion? What do you understand by the term motion? You see many things around you moving in your day to day life. For example, right now when you see the fan that is above your head that is moving, people around you they are moving. So what does this exactly motion means? I have written a definition over here that motion is change in position of the object with respect to time. For example, imagine someone is standing right behind you at some moment. After one minute or two minutes time, you don't see that person standing behind you anymore. You would say that the person was in motion or he moved from one place to another place. So, Change in the position of the object with respect to time is known as motion. To understand that, let us understand this diagram that I have drawn over here. We have considered two time frames over here. One is 10 am and another is 10.05 am. At 10 am, you will see car is on the road at this position. Person B, he is the driver of the car. Right opposite to the car on the side of the road there is a tree and person A is standing near the tree. So person B would say that at 10 am when I see outside the window of the car I can see there is a tree and there is person A standing. Similarly person A would say that at 10 am when I see in front of me there is a car and person B is driving the car. But after 5 minutes of time, if we assume that car B, same car B has moved over here, then person A would say that at 10.05 am, the car is not in front of me as car has moved over here. So person A would say the car and person B was in motion. So here we can say that car has changed its position in 5 minutes of time, it was initially here and after 5 minutes the car is over here. So we will say that car was in motion. Now the next we have written over here that motion is a relative phenomena. So what is relative phenomena means? In a nutshell, if I want to explain motion, you have to explain an object is in motion or not by considering a standard frame of reference or in simple words a standard position. So to explain that another object is in motion or not you have to consider your position to be stable or steady. For example at 10 am person A was standing here and at 10.05 am person A is still standing near the tree but the car is now not in front of person A. So he would say that car was in motion and he is correct over there. Let us try to understand same scenario for person B. What he would explain about this scenario. At 10 am person B would say when I see outside of the car window I can see there is person and person A and tree near the road. But when at 10.05 am I see outside the car there is no tree or there is no person A standing here. So for person B, he would say that person A and tree has moved backward. Now we know what reality is. We know that car has moved from position over here to here. But if you understand person B is also not wrong. He is assuming his position with respect to the seat of the driver. At 10 a.m. he was sitting on the chair. At 10.05 he is still sitting on the chair. And so he would consider his position to be steady and then say that tree and person A has moved backward. So here we have explained motion as a relative phenomena considering this example. We can explain this phenomena by considering our real life examples as well. For example, movement of the sun. If I ask you what is the direction of the movement of the sun? You would answer that sun rises in east and it sets in west. But what the reality is? We know that sun is at the center of our solar system and 
all other planets they move around the sun including the earth wherein we are standing right now so we know that sun is not moving but earth is moving in reality then how can we say that sun rises in east and it sets in west it's because you are considering your position on the earth which is steady it is not moving and hence you see that sun is moving from one end to another end and so to explain motion of any object you have to relate to the position where you are standing and that is called as a frame of reference so there is one frame of reference for person a there is another frame of reference for person b person a is referring to the tree he says that at 10 am i am standing near the tree at 10:05 am i am still standing near the tree but i don't see car in front of me so car has moved for person b the explanation can be at 10 am i am sitting on the driving chair and i see outside the window there is tree and there is person a but at 10:05 am i am still sitting on the driving chair but when i look outside there is no tree and there is no person a so both of these persons person a and person b they are correct in terms of their own explanation and hence we say motion is a relative phenomena now whenever an object is moving or it is in motion it covers some distance so once we understand motion we have to talk about two important concepts related to motion that is distance and displacement so first as we said whenever any object is in motion it covers distance i have written definitions for these two terms that is distance and displacement pay attention to the definitions distance is total path covered by the object in motion so whenever any object is in motion it is moving the path it covers is known as its distance whereas i have written for displacement that it is a shortest path between initial and final position of the object so for displacement we do not consider the path followed by the object in motion instead we just consider initial and final position of the object that was in motion whereas in distance we consider overall path followed by the object when it was in motion to explain that i have written some examples over here which will help you to understand the phenomena as distance and displacement pay attention to the first example we have taken point a over here towards right of point a at 6 meter distance there is point b from b at 2 meter distance there is point c and at 2 meters distance from c there is point d let us assume person starts moving from point a he goes from a to b then from b to c and then from c to d how much total path this person has traveled a to b he has covered 6 meter b to c he has covered 2 meter and c to d he has covered 3 meter of distance so the total distance covered by this object or person is 11 meter now if i consider displacement what we have written here for displacement it says that shortest path between initial and final position of the object now please make a note over here that shortest distance between any two points is always a straight line drawn between these two points if i consider point a which is initial position of the object point d which is final position of the object person a has traveled in a straight line only that is from a to b b to c and c to d he has never turned or changed his direction of motion and so the shortest point or line between a to d would be the same line and hence distance and displacement is equal over here distance is 11 meter even the displacement is 11 meter now if i go to the second example please understand the path followed over here person starts at a he goes to b which is at 6 meter then from b person goes to d which is again at 6 meter from d 
person turns back and comes at point C, which is at 3 meter distance from D towards left. Now here, how much is the total path followed or covered by the object in motion? Again, total path is irrespective of change in direction. So it is A to B, 6 meter, B to D, 6 meter, and then D to C, which is 3 meter. So the total distance covered is 15 meter. Now here there is some change for answer of how much displacement of the person is. As I said, displacement depends on initial and final positions of the object. Initially the person was at point A and at the end of his journey he is standing at point C. So for me the total displacement is only from A to C. From A to C. And so this much is the displacement of the person. So for displacement, I'll consider only the distance between point A to C, which is 6 meter from A to B plus B to C, that is this much, which is 3 meter. And hence the displacement is 9 meter. Now, if you compare these two examples, what is the difference between the motion of the person? Why there was same answer for distance and displacement over here? but there are different answers for distance and displacement in this example. You will understand that there is only one change over here. That is, person has changed his direction of the movement. In first example, he was always moving in a straight line without changing the direction. But in second example, he is moving from A to B, B to D, and then he is turning his position or direction and coming back to C. So, can I say that as direction changes, the displacement or answer to the displacement changes? Yes. So displacement depends on change in direction. In physics, we classify physical quantities in two classifications or groups, scalar quantities and vector quantities. Scalar quantities are the one which do not depend on change in direction. Whereas scalar vector quantities are the one which depends only on magnitude and change in direction. Here, distance is only depending on the values but not the direction. Whereas displacement changes its value due to change in direction. And hence, distance is a scalar quantity which requires only magnitude. Whereas displacement is a vector quantity which requires magnitude as well as direction. I hope you have understood what motion is, how can we explain motion as a relative phenomena and what is distance and displacement associated with motion. In our next video, we are going to discuss about speed and velocity for the objects in motion. Thank you.